So I feel a little silly recording this video because this is not because of the baby toy, but because this is basically the same exact video. I'm just switching out a couple words, okay? So for depth first traversal, DFT, it's almost the exact same, but we do have some new definitions, some new terms that we use when we're talking about these. And specifically, we're not gonna have a queue anymore. We're going to have a stack, just like this, okay? So what we have is we have a stack and uh, this is not going to be first in, first out. This is going to be last in, first out, okay? So imagine that we have a stack and this is the stack of waiting nodes, okay? Well, we can put something on the stack da, 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 and that is called pushing something onto the stack. So instead of enqueuing something where it's waiting in line, we're just pushing something on top. Maybe we're pushing, pushing that purple ring on top or something, All right? And then of course we have five nodes in the stack now, and we can pop that right off. So that's the language here. Instead of enqueuing and dequeuing, it's pushing and popping. So we pushed that purple thing on, and if we wanna take something off here, if we wanna do something with one of these nodes, we can only do the top one, right? That's why it's a stack. You're, the only way you're getting to this big orangey red one down here is if you get rid of everything else on top of it first. And I know that's kind of backwards of what this toy is supposed to be, but I don't know. I don't have a baby, so <laughs> I'll, I'll blame it on that. It's what it made me think of anyway. So that's what we're doing, pushing and popping. And the algorithm is almost exactly the same. And in fact, if we just went back here, and just copy and paste it. You know what? I think I'm gonna do this. It's a little silly. Why would we do this? Let's just copy and paste this. Okay? We're gonna copy and paste this algorithm. And you can just change this to DFT. You still choose the starting node. You still mark it. But instead of enqueuing it, what do you do? It's the same thing, just with a new definition, right? NQ is for queues. Pushing is for stacks. So instead of putting something at the back of the line, we're putting something on the top of the stack. And then again, the next step is the same, but we're calling it a stack now. We don't say DQ. What do we say? We say pop. We don't say the front node. We say the top. I feel like I'm in a Dr. Seuss book now. <laughs> Pop the top node. Okay, so it's the same algorithm. We still visit the node, right? And then we still mark it, but we don't enqueue all unmarked nodes, right? We push all unmarked adjacent nodes. And again, the order doesn't matter. So you can see the DFT algorithm. Both traversal algorithms are the same algorithms, just with a different queuing system. The BFT has the queue, the DFT has the stack. So let's see what this looks like in an actual algorithm. All right, and I'm gonna be marking nodes a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna mark nodes here less in a visual way and more in a way that you know is, could be done um, uh, while coding or something, right? You can mark these by just putting them in a list, right? You just add it, add it to the list. And then when you're doing your while loop, checking if something's marked, you can just see if it's in the list. There are maybe, there are probably more intelligent ways of doing this as well, but this is one way that would work. Okay. So we're going to start with Greg again. Okay. But we're not putting Greg into a queue this time. We're putting Greg in a stack. Uh, let's put him in this stack. So Greg is in a stack. Now the next step, all right, let's go back to our beautiful, oh gosh, where is it? There it is. This is the downside of this. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do myself a favor and take this and just move it where I need it to go. All right, and now they're next to each other. Now they're next to each other, great. 
So we chose our starting node. Now we're going to mark that node and enqueue it. So we'll have our, our, our list, our marking over here. So we're going to say, Greg is marked. Let's put him over here. And again, it might still be visually helpful to, to put the X here still. Okay, that was the next step. And now while the stack is not empty, we're going to pop the top node, visit the node, and then we're going to mark and push all unmarked adjacent nodes. The order doesn't matter. So, all right, let's uh, pop Greg off the top of this. We're going to do whatever we need to do in this algorithm. Maybe we're recording distances. Maybe we're um, analyzing something about this person in this network. Maybe we're just counting. Maybe this is just as simple as N++. But anyway, pop Greg off, visit the node, and then we add all adjacent nodes. Order does not matter. So we're going to mark and push Chuck and Izzy. Order does not matter. Let's put Chuck at the bottom and Izzy up here. And since we marked them, right, we mark Chuck and then we marked Izzy doing it in the same order. Not that the order really matters anyway. And then we go and iterate, right? While this stack is not empty, we keep on doing it. So we pop the top one, which is Izzy. All right, we do whatever we need to do. And then we mark and add, mark and push all connected nodes, which is just a lane. So we're gonna write down a lane over here to show, all right, that's on our list of marked nodes and we're going to um, push her onto the stack. So you can see, right, the, the difference already between breadth first and depth first, it's kind of self-explanatory in the name, but Chuck is gonna be waiting a long time, okay? Right, like, and that's the whole thing about depth first. Breadth first, you know, you, you start at the home and then you kind of trickle out. Depth first, you're going down one path, all the other people or things or places in the other path, they're going to have to wait a long time. Chuck's not going anywhere until everything else has been dealt with. And then we'll go down Chuck's path. Okay. So again, I recommend pausing the video. Try to finish this on your own. Keep doing this and see what we got. So we're going to uh, put pop a lane off the node, do whatever we need to do in analyzing a lane. And then we are going to mark and push all adjacent nodes. So here we're marking and pushing three nodes, Jackie, Faith, and Kim. All right, because those are all the unmarked adjacent nodes and we're pushing them. Jackie, Faith, Kim. Sorry, Chuck, you got a lot of people in front of you in the line because this is not a line anymore, it's a stack. And Chuck is the recipient of a dog pile. I don't know if that's still a thing, but it was when I was a kid. Anyway, then we keep going. We pop Kim off the list, do whatever we need to do with that. And then add push all unmarked neighbors, which is just Brittany. And then pop on top. Sorry, push on top. All right, now, uh, well, we're gonna pop Brittany off. There's no unmarked adjacent neighbors, but we do visit the Brittany node, do whatever we need to do, and then we'll keep going. We'll pop Faith off. Again, do whatever we need to do, and then add any unmarked neighbors, of which there are none. We'll pop Jackie off, do whatever we need to do, add any unmarked neighbors, and we do have one, Adrian. All right, do whatever we, uh, and we, yeah, and then we added Adrian up here. Sorry, Chuck, <laughs> you thought it was your turn, Chuck, but it was not. And then, uh, yeah, we'll pop Adrian off, do whatever we need to do here, add any unmarked neighbors of Adrian, of which there are none, and now it's Chuck's turn. So do whatever we need to do with Chuck, and again, no unmarked neighbors. So you can see over here the order through which we traverse the graph. And of course, very different from breadth first. First we did Greg, next step we did Izzy, next step we did Elaine, 
And then it was like Jackie, Faith, and Kim were all added after that, right? So you can really see that going down here. And again, I guess we didn't really do them in the same step. Um, so I don't actually want to write it like that because the order didn't matter. We could have done any of those fours next, right? But you can definitely see the difference between breadth and depth. It is what it sounds like, I think. And then you can see the order here. You could have compared that with the other one if you write the order the other way. So the end result is really the same. At the end of the day, we are traversing graphs. At the end of the day, we have the same list of uh, this, sorry, not the same list, the same set of marked nodes. We've gone through the same nodes. Remember in sets, order doesn't matter. So the end result is the same if you go through the entire algorithm, which is one of the advantages to the algorithm. Of course, with gigantic things, there are some considerations for this, right? If we're talking about huge things, then yes, computation time does matter. The order in which you go things through things does matter because you might not have time to go through it all. And again, like a lot of my research in graduate school was on algorithms and uh, specifically like um, branch and bound algorithms for progressive hedging for stochastic mixed integer programs, which are a little bit more complicated. And I don't want to talk about here, but uh, yeah, it's it's. The reality is like it's great to design all these algorithms, but when you're dealing with such huge, huge graphs, the question stops becoming, how do we do this? And it becomes, how do we do this in time? How, how do we do this in less than five years of computational time and stuff like that? So that's when things get a lot more interesting to me as well. But um, this is kind of an introduction to how you can traverse the graphs different styles. And of course, even between these two styles, if you don't have all day for your algorithm to run, there are different times when you're going to use different algorithms, right? If uh, a lot of like maze solutions um, are, are, are can be found with depth first, because again, you just want to keep going down a path until you have a dead end. It does not make any sense to do breadth first when solving a maze, right? It's like, oh, can I go left? Can I go right? Okay. Now, if I went left, could I go left? If I went right, could I, right? That's not how we, how we would do it ourselves either, let alone a computer if we wanted things to go quickly. Um, breadth first can be good if you have like short trees or like um, shallow graphs and stuff like that. Depth first is, uh, can also, if you have really wide graphs, of course, depth first will use less memory. Um, and then a lot of times can be used for like, uh, game simulations as well. But anyway, there's a lot of times when you'll use one or the other, but we're mostly just introducing what those algorithms look like. In the next video, we're going to talk about traversing graphs specifically to find the shortest path between two things. So in these algorithms, right, we kind of just said, do it, do whatever you need to do, visit the node. But in the next video, we're going to introduce an algorithm that uses this idea and doing something, visiting the node is going to be helpful in evaluating how we can find the shortest path between any two nodes, which is fun. But that's the next video. It's not this one. Stay tuned. Have a good one.